Hello everyone and welcome to another high low game of Age of Empires. Today units with powerful counter bonuses take on cheaper counter units as Hera playing as the Incas in blue prepares to take on MBL playing as the Byzantines in yellow. Now while the players heard their herdables explore their immediate surroundings and try to get their butts up to Feudal Age ASAP. Not a bad time for us Baba Black Sheep to take a look at the Civ matchup that we are going to be watching today. Uh, Hera, you're pushing the deer the wrong way. <laughs> stubborn, stubborn deer. In any event, the Inca is the quintessential counter civilization. If your opponent goes cavalry, the Incas can rely on their unique unit, the Kamayuk, a ranged infantry unit that carries a very long spear, I believe the longest spear in the game, that comes with a massive attack bonus against a whole variety of mounted units. To counter infantry, the Incas can rely on their second unique unit, the Slinger, this is an archer unit that comes with a pretty big attack bonus against infantry and which can be upgraded to get a small plus one attack boost. Now to counter archer units, the Incas can rely on their skirmishers, which not only get all archery range, blacksmith and university upgrades, but can also be upgraded to have no minimum range whatsoever, which does remove one of the big weaknesses of the skirmisher. Now to make the Incan army last a little bit longer on the battlefield, they can give their entire army Viagra by upgrading their Kamiuks, their slingers and their eagle warriors to get extra melee and pierce armor and that help build and support their military industrial complex. All their military units cost less and less food as the game goes on. 10% less food in the Dark Age, up to 25% less food in Imperial. The Incas do start the game, if you noticed, with a free llama underneath the town center. Their buildings cost 15% less stone. Their houses support 10 population instead of the usual five, which just free up a little bit of wood in the early stages of the game. And their villagers are harder to raid because starting in Castle Age, they do benefit from infantry blacksmith upgrades. And by the way, the Incas, they get all infantry blacksmith upgrades. Now who, you might be asking, might want to attack one of these peaceful, innocent, hardworking villagers? Well, look no further to the right side of the map where we've got MBL playing as the Byzantines a civilization designed to be as hard as frickin' possible to take down. Their structures get progressively more HP as the game goes on. 10% in the Dark Age, 2640 HP compared to the usual 2400. All the way up, by the way, to 40% more HP in Imperial. Their Bombard Towers can be upgraded to do splash damage. They get Town Watch and Town Patrol for free, so they can see you coming from a mile away. And once the battle actually starts, their monks heal units twice as fast as normal. They can slow down enemy advances by spamming so-called trash units for days because their spearman line, their skirmisher line, and their camel rider line units are all 25% cheaper. And their unique unit, the Cataphract, is a heavy cavalry unit with a massive attack bonus against infantry that can take a beating with a good amount of HP and pretty strong base armor. Now, when the Byzantines finally do decide to get their butts up to Imperial Age, they only pay two-thirds the cost of doing so, which does allow them to reinvest, or maybe just invest, the saved resources into upgrading their Cataphracts even more by giving them an even bigger attack bonus against infantry and trample damage. Ooh, a very powerful, very scary unit is the Cataphract. Uh, to be fair, though, the scariest unit so far in the Dark Age seems to be the stubborn, stubborn deer that the players are having issues hurting and pushing and pulling, whatever you want to describe it as. Both players at 18 villagers, both players, I'm assuming, are going to go up to the next age once Loom completes for MBL in nine seconds. I'm assuming he's going to force drop some of this food. He's at 483 chicken nuggets. There it is. There's the force drop, and there it is. About 25 seconds. Actually, not about 25 seconds. Exactly 25 seconds behind his opponent. I'm assuming that Hera does not have Loom. He does not. Most likely we'll queue it up behind the Roman numeral two. Not a bad time for us off of 18 villagers a pop to take a look at the map. We are on runestones again. I don't blame the players for wanting to explore and experience this map a lot more. It is basically like Arabia and based on my understanding only comes with two differences. The first is there's always a relic nestled between two rock formations in the dead center of the map. And second, the reason why I think players might prefer this to Arabia the wood lines are supposed to be thicker, juicier, and a little bit more protective. Whereas if you saw our live stream a few days ago, uh, the evening we spent with Mr. Yo watching his games, some of those Arabia spawns are just downright atrocious, downright insulting. There was one game, I believe the Viper literally started in the middle of nowhere, 
with no forest coverage at all. Anyway, that's my rant about why I think the players are preferring runestones. Hera does queue up Loom immediately, especially having seen his enemy scout. He, for his part, has also discovered where his opponent is. Let's take a very quick look at the bases. Primary gold, mm, bit of a safe location. Easy to wall this off with a barracks and a stable, apparently. Ooh, 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 ooh. Did MBL, by the way, miss an opportunity here with Hera not having Loom and his scout being here for the last few minutes to actually pick off one of these villagers? We'll see, as uh, it looks like MBL wants to trap this eagle. Maybe not. Does he even know it's there? Of course he does. Where is his primary stone? Also in the forward position. Extra gold, very exposed to the front. Extra gold to the back. And secondary stone off to the side. Forests providing a decent coverage, as uh, as I mentioned, in rune stones. The forests never really an issue. They all kind of start with the never eat shredded wheats location generally. And now MBL is pushing in with more of those Byzantine units, another scout is being trained. This discounted spearman is going to poke and prod at a villager, but Era brings another villager. If this was Castle Age, they'd have some uh, blacksmith upgrades, but for now, not at all. Okay. <laughs> Somebody got an attack off against something there. I heard the attack animation. Hera, for his part, both primary gold and stone. Nice and secure to the rear of the base. Beautiful location for those. As he continues to shoo away this spearman, where are his additional resources? Gold, kind of in the forward position. Another patch of gold to the back of the top left of his base. And where's his secondary stone? Exposed to the front. So the attack path from MBL's base to Hera's pretty much just a big open clearing. And we'll see who that benefits, whether it's a bit of the slower moving Inca. And I say slower moving, they do have access to the fastest infantry unit in the game, the Elite Eagle Warrior, which I believe moves at 1.43 tiles per second, which is not that much slower than a Knight with Husbandry, to be fair, which moves at 1.49 tiles. But you do have the Byzantines and the Mounted and the Camels and the, the Quadrupedal options available to it. Uh-oh, wait a second. This is not one scout. These are three scouts, although one of them is very much injured. These eagles, I don't think they come with an attack bonus yet against cavalry. I think that kicks in in Castle Age, even if they are still just scouts. Okay. MBL defuses his villagers. His villagers, his scout hunting villagers. And there we go. I didn't hear the death sound of the villager, but MBL gets the first kill of the game. And it's a villager kill. So Hera is now down one villager. Both players banking about the same TC idle time. Six seconds for our Byzantine, eight seconds for our Inca. Who is now trying to viper in these scouts, but a little, literally a fraction of a second too slow. And the scouts have absconded. It looks like, by the way, one of the three scouts inside the base has died as well. So Hera evens up the kill count, but he is still down now. Actually, two villagers. Right as I finish that sentence, it goes back to one. So one or two, depending on... When exactly you look up at the screen, not a bad time for us, by the way, to look up at the Byzantine base, which has gone full wall in. And so I like that MBL has secured primary stone and gold in a bit of a wall off situation here. Market going up as well for him. We know he's got a stable and the market will give him the two structures he needs to go up to the next age. Hera, for his part, has a lot of gold in the bank. He also has a market. Does he have a secondary structure? No, he does not. Hera's running a little bit low on wood right now. Despite the uh, despite the presence of these scouts, he is keeping his lumberjacks very safe right now. And I'm assuming once this blacksmith completes, uh, once the villager completes training, he will go up to the next age MBL for his part. Going wheelbarrow, okay. Here is now on this side of the map, pushing into this part of the base. MBL immediately secondary wall off behind it. And I, this is just an incredible amount of scouting that MBL is getting. He's got 13 HP left on these scouts. Basically means that they uh, are one poke or so away from dying. And he is microing them, actually. I thought uh, he might not be uh, microing them. May have just shift clicked in a big circle about a hundred times. But based on how he's reacted to the presence of these Eagle Warriors, this is very much... A micro-intensive endeavor here for MBL. <laughs> oh my, what an amazing situation here. Hera's trying to close in on these scouts. MBL is just running circles around them. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. MBL's micro is incredible right now. 
Hera is struggling to catch up. Uh, looked like he was about to poke the horse's ass a little bit there. Still 13 HP. Oh, but why does MBL keep coming back to this corner? He's trapping himself. You played yourself, says DJ Khaled. Okay, one poke. One poke, six HP left. Three HP on this. I mean, this is perhaps not the most dramatic of situations, but I'm loving this. This is incredible. Okay, now finally MBL. Again, inexplicably went into that corner multiple times. Oh, I had to pivot away right as one of the scouts got poked to death. I apologize. And now there's only one scout with two HP left. At the same time, Hera is non-stop. He's brought two villagers. He's in castle. Siege workshop. Okay, no siege workshop. Double monastery. So he says, you know what's better than training my own army and investing resources and building my own army? Stealing whatever you make. At this point, even a villager should be able to kill this one scout that has zero melee armor and two HP. What fantastic micro. I might have to make a short out of MBL's micro there. That was just superb. That being said, what's he doing back home to deal with this? He's now in Castle Age immediate castle. Remember, now these Byzantine uh, houses are 30% thicker. That's why this one has 1170 HP compared to the 900 of the Inca. Okay, anyway, we'll keep an eye on that scout. We'll see how long he survives there. For now, the more pressing situation developing here. Will Hera see the castle? He does with the eagles. Light cavalry immediately for our Byzantine as well. He saw the monastery. He saw double monk. So whatever he plans, whether or not this is a defensive castle or to actually train cataphracts, I don't know. We'll find out in about 15 seconds. But more importantly, he's got to figure out how to get rid of those monks. And his solution is a light cavalry force. Okay, combined with cataphracts. So MBL is building a perfect counter army. Light cav for the monks, cataphracts. For the Eagles, I believe the, even the base Cataphract does come with a plus 9 attack bonus against infantry at the moment. Ooh, Eagles are in. A palis Palisade Wall and a half-built house are what's standing in the way of these Eagles just running amok. By the way, that scout did die inside Hera's base. Hera, for his part, is going up to three town centers. By the way, with that scout, has MBL seen any of them? Yeah, he saw the second TC. Fantastic. Absolutely. I, I mean, just keeping those scouts alive and microing them as much as he did is just an absolute boss move out of MBL. Even though Hera has three kills, they are three scouts. Ooh, good time maybe to go after the monk. Oh, he doesn't see it. By the way, he doesn't see and just now sees that there are two monasteries. Catches out a monk in the open. Monk dies immediately. Do they have sanctity, these monks? I, it's hard to say because <laughs> if you're trying to click these monks, they are dead. Looks like one is returning home. No, they don't. No fervor, no sanctity. Okay, and here is abandoned ship. One monk and a relic in you, one relic in you. Always a little confusing when you're playing against monks to know what that flag represents. Is it a relic? Is it a monk? He gets another monk, but loses a cataphract to a conversion that is very sour. And I do apologize. I said the monks don't have fervor. I don't think the Incas get fervor. I think their monks are just stuck at the slow 0.7 tiles per second movement speed. Cataphracts are chasing in, but now they've got to be real weary. Now they've got to be real careful because you never know if you're being forced into a monk trap. Double murder-suicide happening here. Ouch. To be fair, at least he finally did get rid of that converted... Their sanctity, by the way. So the monks will have a little bit more lasting power. And, I mean, Hera is very confident. He's going four monks in here. Two of them get evicted. Will he get the conversion? He gets another conversion! I mean, the RNG, the random number generator, is just working so much in our uh, Inca's favor at the moment. MBL, for his part, finally expanding with a second town center. He is down 17 villagers. He's keeping army count apace with his opponent, finally getting husbandry. 
That being said, he also has the better army supply, the army quality, unless Hera just keeps leading him into traps. Oh, MBL splits, but a big juicy monastery protects the left flank of the monk and he has to get the hell out of here. Thwarted by a building under construction is our Byzantine light cavalry, but maybe not now. Splits them again. But Hera closes surrounded is the monk by an honor guard. He gets another conversion. What the hell is going on? Oh no. Oh no, not another one. <laughs> not another one. He got another one. Arinka has two cataphracts. The light cavalry he had died a little few seconds ago, but MBL has failed to dislodge this double monastery. Hera thought he would lose it. He built a backup monastery over here. How many relics does he have control of? Three. So literally one in each monastery. If they were fortified churches, they'd be firing arrows. Cataphract is going after what? A fellow cataphract or a light cavalry unit? No, he got the weaker cataphract. Hera picks off the weakest member of the herd. How pro players manage to do this in the middle of microing about a billion things at once, I'll never understand and eminently respect. Moo, Moonwalking Scout Line unit as well. And they're trying to find monks, trying to find reinforcements moving in this direction, but little does he know, all of the monks are already here, all six of them. And he's continuing to search for something. Is MBL, will he find a monk? Will he find a villager? Will he get any kind of damage done? But now these eagles, I'm trying to click them. I'm clicking a farm of barracks, everything but the actual unit I want to click. They are warriors, so they do come with a plus three attack bonus against cavalry. Okay, second villager kill here for our Byzantine, who is playing very relaxed for someone who is getting monk pushed. Although saying monk pushed is a bit of a misnomer here as Hera's push has kind of stalled out as well. Oh my goodness, Hera says not today. I am going to trap your units. It looks like the cataphracts had their way with four, five, six, Six dot 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 eagle warriors. I was waiting to say seven, but again, the eagles just retreat into the safety of the freaking monk. Nine, uh, nine attack range, sniper line range is going to keep this Byzantine army at bay. He needs something to counter these monks, and I think he's going to need something a little bit more uh, numerous than four light cavalry units. Hera just collapsing his entire army on top of these monks, keeping them safe. He's training three more. Two scout line units here are dead. Harris says, you know what? I don't mind this little area. If I ever put a lumber camp here, it'll keep me safe. So I'll just keep it up. Most of the time, the pro players do delete those things. Okay, MBL now sees a castle going up in the middle of the map as well. And Hera is going up to Imperial. Another conversion on a light cavalry unit. What What's the conversion count at right now? And MBL, he's just running away. Says enough's enough, I can't keep losing my army. He's also going up to Imperial. Remember the Byzantines do pay two thirds of the cost. So instead of 1,800, they pay, I believe 667 food and 530 gold. Hera is in Imperial. Treb, immediately a Treb, immediately a second castle. And a whole bunch of monk upgrades, block printing, illumination, theocracy. These monks are going to be roided to the hilt, but... But, 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 doesn't really matter when you're not really attacking. MBL loses two more light cavalry units, and Hera blocks out the cataphracts from attacking into the castle, but they bust their way in anyway. Skirmishers are out. Basic skirmishers are going to start hunting monks. And like I said, these are not the faster moving monks that you're used to. These are a little bit slower. And MBL is chasing in and getting absolutely slaughtered. What a terrible, terrible move there for those skirmishers. I mean, if Hera wins this game, and it certainly is looking with 17 villagers, Imperial Age, and two castles breathing down MBL's neck, that he is uh, on the verge, at least, of uh, making it unlosable for himself, this monk is going to be the MVP of the game. Now the Treb have been, be, has begun its bombardment. A little bit of a cocky move here out of Arinka, thinking he can teeth the primary, uh, sorry, not primary, the tertiary gold of his opponent.
MBL has gone up to 10 Cataphracts. He needs more. He just needs more numbers. If you're going to play into Monks, if you're going to attack into a line of Monks and expect to lose, because remember, Monks are a two-unit swing. You lose one and your opponent gains one. You need numbers. You need quantity. And uh, Eagles are going to have an absolute feast. Forget a feast of crows. This is going to be a feast of eagles if they can close on those skirmishers. By the way, what the hell are these cataphracts just doing? The light cap just hanging out. MBL is fully transitioning to skirmishers, by the way. His castle, luckily, is an Imperial Age Byzantine castle with 40% more HP, which is why it's got a ridiculous 6720 compared to the usual 4800. That being said, MBL is starting to run low on stone. He's at 100 stone. He's got zero stone miners. Does manage to pick off a Treb. And now Kamayuks are out. Oh, things are going from bad to worse for this cavalry army of our Byzantine. His skirmishers are now elite. MBL just needs numbers. Uh, at this point, just train anything and everything. And throw it right at the Inca's face. The Inca, by the way, is attacking the rear of the base with converted... Oh no, Cataphracts. Kamu does die to the town center, though. Where one Kamuyuk existed a second ago. Now there are nine. What are the armor? 1-1 one, one on the Cataphracts when they were converted right now. It is still actually 1-1. One, one. Town center gets a kill as well. This is what happens when you betray us. Say this group of 10 Cataphracts. As they literally decimate their former friend. And now the Kamiuks are moving forward. Archery ranges down. How many does that leave our Byzantine with? Only two archery ranges. He's got 46 army count. He's housed, though, after losing that castle. But that's not going to be a problem for him in a second because... Okay. Doesn't get any monks again. Because these Kamiuks are just going to shred through these skirmishers. And now MBL is being raided to the back by Eagle Warriors. The last thing you want to be visited upon you want to have visited upon you the Kamiks are chasing in but they're dying and all of a sudden MBL's army count is uh lower equal to his opponent but he's down 40 villagers oh man MBL had a lot of early game momentum here with that villager kill that he got and then those scouts basically having their way with the inside of the base but Hera just took control with this Monk play and MBL didn't nip it in the bud quick enough. This is one of those cases where I think he had a, a um, an opportunity, a time. I want to say a timing, but that means something different in an RTS. He, he had a moment where he had a bit of time to deal with these monks. And holy moly, I did not want to say moly. I wanted to say S-H-I-T did the conversion RNG work in Hera's favor. Forget all the stats for now. I just want to see conversions. Eight conversions out of 88 is literally 10% of the Byzantine army. Whether it was the infantry counter cataphract or whether it was the monk counter light cavalry unit that was converted, Hera's RNG was just on point and his monks wreaking havoc on the Byzantine military. And honestly, MBL just needed numbers. He ends the game with 539 wood, probably... That probably should be at zero. Who's kidding who? You need to add more infrastructure. You need to add more. And if you went full on cataphracts and your castle is down and you don't have any stone, all of a sudden, is it no wonder he GG'd because he can no longer replenish his most powerful unit here, which, by the way, is down 40% of its HP. Ugh. Well, 35 to 40% of its HP. You're also an Imperial, but good luck uh, getting Trebs without a castle. That's just uh, not something that exists in this game. This is interesting at the end of the day. <laughs> I mean, they were here for a short time and a good time, not a long time, but apparently Hera's most trained unit was the Kamiuk. Okay, literally in the last, what, two or three minutes? Eagles and Monks, APM a little bit below as usual, 200. 36 minutes in, 22 minutes in for MBL, who again, a little bit surprised that this is his most trained unit. I thought it was going to be light cavalry. Cataphracts never, re never really getting the numbers to where they needed to be. And Hera just absolutely protecting his monks like uh, like a Praetorian guard almost. Uh, relics 4 to 0 at the end of the day, adding 1,500 gold to a civilization that is uh, not that gold intensive. 
and we've got all of the resources except for wood in which case MBL uh, in which MBL is what I had 300 wood everything else he's behind he's a 25 percent smaller economy than his opponent of course he's down so many villagers and look at that line just plummeting down in the last minute that's the Kamiuks closing in on the skirmishers and the castles closing in on the light cab seven raisings let's take a look at the total kill count nine villager kills to seven so it's not like Hera had 40 villager kills to explain this difference in army counts but maybe MBL went a little bit too heavy into cataphract and should have gone a bit more into cheaper uh trash units that could have sniped those monks but I regardless of all of that I think this failing to dislodge this leaving Hera with the ability to continually train three monks at a time and convert 10% of your army that's eight units that you've lost and eight units that he's gained that's 16 unit swing and MBL just failing to capitalize on that really cool early game momentum and the insane level of micro that he was uh, actually was it at that time no, I don't think 22 was when those two scouts... Actually, once we're done all this, I'll go back to the 22. Actually, it doesn't really matter. We're already done. I want to see when he was. It, it Was it those two scouts? No. So th those two scouts were already dead. This is his peak APM, sniping a, a monk and a, and a eagle warrior. Interesting. I thought for sure it was going to be when those two light cav with 13 HP were evading the four eagles that Hera sent to kill them. But ultimately, it's these two structures... And maybe even the backup monastery that went up eventually that MBL just failed to dislodge. And Hera, despite taking some initial harassment in the beginning of the game, look at how he ends the game. Completely unmolested, unattacked, safe from anything. He didn't even need these two <laughs> castles because the Byzantine wasn't interested in raiding at all. MBL playing a bit more of a passive game with his units. We saw them relaxing up here. We saw them relaxing down here. They were just on sabbatical, these uh, Byzantine cataphracts and Byzantine light cavalry. And honestly, can you blame them? Every time they try to close on a monk, they die. Every time they try to close on an eagle, they die. Every time they try to do anything, you got it. They die. And so ultimately, it's with just a few more kills that Hera manages to deflect the initial loss of a villager, kill the three scouts that were in there, in a grand fashion, by the way, and then save the two monasteries and more importantly, save the monks that were popped out of there. And with that, Hera takes the W in a fun, not really back and forth game. There was a little bit of a push, but after that, MBL was just on the defensive the entire time. I think he was incredibly focused on getting his cataphracts up and running and Hera suspected that would be the case. And instead of going, you know, traditional counter unit like a Kamiuk, uh, what, because, I mean, these are still infantry units, so plus nine attack bonus against them would be atrocious. He went full on monk. And even though, like I mentioned, they are a bit of a slower moving monk, it is the monks, the MVPs of this game that lead Hera to the W, but GG in a very fun game to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.